next guest shocked the Democratic Party with her primary victory on Tuesday night. She's now on track to become the youngest congresswoman in history. Please welcome Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. <laughs> Uh, welcome to the show. Um, I, I, I want to confess that I did not know your name on Monday. <laughs> Most people didn't. But what is it like for you? Because this is your first election. Yeah. You unseated a 10 term uh, congressman, Crowley, mm -hmm. who uh, many people had thrown out his name as the possible heir apparent for Nancy Pelosi's number four Democrat. Mm -hmm. Three weeks before the election, the polls showed you 36 points behind him, mm -hmm. and you won by 15 points. Yep. That's 51. <laughs> that's a 51. Yeah. What, uh, I, I, obviously, uh, you, you're a very capable, intelligent person. Why do you think you were able to swing 51 points in three weeks and unseat yeah. this man and been there for 20 years? Well, I think the first thing to kind of mention is that I don't think polling is always right. We learned that so, in 2016. We learned that in 2016. You know, yes. polling, here's the big thing polling, people try to identify who is the most likely person to turn out. And what we did is that we changed who turns out. And that changes the whole election. Well, who turned out? Who doesn't turn out? Who doesn't turn out, especially for Democratic primaries? And who turned out for you? What, what, is, what is your, who are your constituents? Well, I'll tell you one thing. We were about eight minutes till the polls were closing, and I was in my home neighborhood in the Bronx, and these two young... Oh, yeah, BX? We got any BX out here? Um, and it was eight minutes till the polls closed, and these two, like, teenage-looking kids came up to me. and was like, we just voted for you. And I was like, how old are you? And they're like, 19? And I was like, oh, 19 years old voting in an off-year midterm primary election? What is going through this? What is going through your head? Let's show you this clip right here. We've got a clip of the moment you found out you won. We don't have the sound on this, but just there you oh, are. Yeah. <laughs> What's happening? What's going through your mind at that moment? Well, it was, it was so crazy because I had not checked any of the polls. I, in the car on the way to this... Uh, party to the watch party. It was like an old billiards hall in the mm -hmm. Bronx. I hadn't checked any of the polls in my phone. And then we get out, we get out and I go, oh my God, outside, because I see all of these reporters like running to the, the watch party. And like nobody was there. Was, I mean, it was our volunteers and our supporters and our organizers. If but... you see reporters running towards you, it's either yeah. very good or very bad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I, so I see these reporters. I'm literally like racing these reporters into the billiards hall, <laughs> and I run inside and I just like run into this TV set and I look up and I see the margin and then I see the amount of precincts reporting, and that's how I found out that we won the election right there in that moment. Now there is there is a you, you have a good shot mm -hmm. because it is a majority Democratic district, so there's a good shot that you're going to go to Congress while not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. oh, you, you said you, because you work in hospitality, you might be able to get people to get on board with your agenda. What is your agenda? Because you describe yourself as a democratic socialist, and that's not an easy term for a lot of Americans. What is the meaning of that for you? What does socialist mean to you? For me, so for me, uh, democratic socialism is about really uh, the value for me is that I believe that in a modern, moral, and wealthy society, no person in America should be too poor to live. That's what I think. That seems simple. Seems pretty simple. So what that means to me yeah. is, um, so what that means to me is healthcare as a human right. Um, it means that every child, no matter where you are born, should have access to a college or trade school education if they so choose it. And um, you know, I think that no person should should be homeless um, if if we can have public structures and and public policy to allow for people to have homes and food and lead a dignified life in the United States. Well, those all seem like very worthy goals. You may get a little resistance from Donald Trump because he said in one of his uh, tweets, he said. 
Wow, big Trump hater <laughs> Congressman Joe Crowley, who many expected was going to take Nancy Pelosi's place, just lost his primary election. In other words, he's out. That is a big one that nobody saw happening. Perhaps he should have been nicer and more respectful <laughs> to his president. So I ask you, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, yeah. are you going to be nicer to the president? Well, you know, the president is from Queens, and with all due respect, half of my district is from Queens. I don't think he knows how to deal with a girl from the Bronx. <laughs> we'll see. Thank you so much for being here. Congratulations. Thank good you luck. Thank you very much. Thank Alexandria you. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, everybody. We'll be right back.